Hey, good morning from Walla Walla, Washington, and what a nice morning it is to work on old machine tools in your driveway. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you what, um, one of the things about working on machine tools in your driveway, like, uh, let me show you around. You see right here? That's the neighbor's house. And he's got tin foil on that window. He's in there sleeping right now. So that rules out using a, <clears throat> a needle scaler or air tools or making a whole bunch of noise. I hope you all can understand that. We got enough noise with the airplanes flying overhead. But, uh, you know, I have to be somewhat discreet. Uh, even though I got these machine tools sticking in the town's face in my driveway. I don't know if they have some kind of regulations against this kind of clutter or not, but one of the things that's going on with me, nobody's bothering me because I'm going to get these things out of here and everybody knows it. They're going inside. But uh, I do have um, a grandfathered business license in this location. I got that before all the Californians moved in here and changed things. So, you know, you can't have a business out of your house. Well, I've had a business out of this house. This is my grandfather's house since like uh, 1980. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not pushing things, you know. Uh, nobody else in this town, I think, has got machine tools like this in their driveway. But um, I'm doing everything I can to get them out of the driveway and inside. I just thought I'd explain that, you know. Uh, yeah, I could do this stuff in a hurry with power equipment and caustic chemicals and all kinds of stuff like that. But uh, I gotta, I gotta be somewhat discreet. And plus, I'm retired, and I don't have to be in a hurry for anybody anymore, you know. Unless you want to give me a couple of bucks for something, and maybe I'll get it done in a couple of days. <laughs> what an attitude, huh? But the most important thing right now is these machines. <laughs> now, you know, I, I. Uh, like this drill press here I'm working on, um, I actually think it's a work of art, and I wish I was a better painter and artist in that way to make it, it really do it up. But I think I can make this thing look pretty good. Um, I pulled that old mill out of uh, the same yard as this, and it doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks pretty nice. So I think I can do the same with this. And uh, I'll show you some of the things I'm going to kind of do to, uh, I'm looking at. And I've got a handful of scrapers here. And I'm going to have to sharpen them again. I'm not kidding. This stuff's pretty, uh, pretty uh, abrasive, the, the black uh, filler. Um, sometimes, uh, so I'm kind of using this scraper. And uh, I got this little detail scraper I made here. It's very small, and it's really handy for things. And I'll show you some things I'm kind of looking at that I, I think I can make this drill press look better. So, uh, here, we've got these uh, steel bosses here for bearings and stuff. So I'm going to scrape all the paint and goo off these. See, I can scrape it off. Then I'll take some scotch Bright and I'll start polishing these. And this one too. All, all the little uh, covers like this, I'm going to have bright steel polished up. And I was looking at this base here that the motor mounts on. And I think I'm I can preserve that and not paint it. I'll just scrub it with the uh, acetone and uh, automatic transfer mission fluid and a brass brush and brighten that up and not paint it. I'll do something about these bars. I'm working the uh, some riser bars here. See, I can uh, get the, uh, the rust off those. We'll see. Maybe I can polish those up too. We'll see. Because they, they look like pretty nice steel. So, I'm really getting a lot closer. And uh, some of these areas like this and that. And I'm going to 
you know, do some kind of a, a, a two-tone uh, paint on this really nice general electric motor. These, these really are nice looking in um, old electric motors. So you paint the end bells different colors in the center and stuff like that. <clears throat> kind of do the same with the hand wheels and uh, do a two-tone paint job. Then all of these uh, bolts and all of this stuff, I'm going to polish all that stuff. And uh, this rod going down, I'm going to polish all that. And uh, <clears throat> that's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. But uh, I, I find this fun. I'm in no hurry. And there's no reason to be. There's just no reason for me to be in a hurry. The only thing I want to do is try to get these things in before winter, and I think I can do that. Well, I will do that one way or the other. I might want to take a vacation. I don't know. We'll see. But um, this thing here, this steel cap, trying to get all the, uh, I, I don't know, you the worst paint to get off is the stuff that's hidden, see? Isn't that something? But uh, I want to take this part here and polish it, you know, and uh, this stuff here I'll just paint. But anything that kind of sticks out, oh, like that uh, uh, boss there, or that thing that holds the bearings, and I'll polish that. And uh, just anything that I can get to kind of give it some contrast and take the eye away from anything that's rusted. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know what's going on in the neighborhood here, but there's a bit of traffic. So, that's the perspective uh, for today. And uh, I'm gonna go over it with, uh, with sandpaper here pretty quick before it gets too hot. I'm going to be forced uh, to do some other things because it's been getting quite hot here. I got to clean that thing up. That's the lock. We'll get that done. Let me get down here. Starting at the top and uh, working my way right to the bottom here. <laughs> okay, I still got paint to get off the bottom of this axle set here. Yeah. It's almost peeling off anyway. So that's uh that's not fun. <laughs> but I just about got stuff done here on the uh upper parts of these machines. So I'll go over them and um and uh sand this stuff smoother then uh, then I'll put the uh um the uh, primer i got that's with that uh international harvester paint i'm just gonna go ahead and use because it's easy to uh yeah yeah i'm in a place where there's just not a lot of selections now <laughs> you see this is this is an area i haven't got you can see how lumpy it is after you knock the paint off so i just go over it have to with that wider scraper but you can see how brittle this stuff is and just skim it down i got almost all of it but the, this side there's just a bit of it there yeah yeah the stuff is dusty and uh nothing dissolves it well um with everything i tried uh denatured alcohol that i had on hand um, had the best effect, but you know, you'd probably need 20, I don't know, maybe five gallons of denatured alcohol, you could make some headway, but boy, that stuff stinks on its own. Here's another one of those covers I'm going to um, leave unpainted and polish. And just kind of try to do some kind of detail to this thing. That's the switch there. And I don't know. I, I think it's coming along pretty good, considering, you know, you gotta you gotta take into account how old the guy is that's working on this stuff, you know. All right. 
<laughs> okay. I think that's pretty good. I, I think I'm making progress. I think this old axle sense looking good. And it's, it's just that it takes time. But <clears throat> so does building a ship in a bottle. <laughs> This is like a big ship in a bottle. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> uh, I, uh, I managed to... Uh, oh, turn that noise off. I tell you, what you have to put up with to get local weather report. Uh, I... Uh, um, hauled most of this KDK out of here. And that was a job in itself. There's hundreds of pounds of stuff. That stuff's really heavy. But I got the uh, cutter grinder uh, here really set up nice with, uh, with that uh, small KDK type. And um, what's kind of neat about this, uh, uh, these KDKs take even handle all of the big tool holders too. So I can sharpen the tools for the axles on, uh, uh, right here in the cutter grinder. And uh, that, that's, that's a pretty handy thing to do. And uh, also I can use a tool holder here like a, like a vise, like this, like this here. But um, if you can't find a work head, um, you, you might consider doing something like this. Um, it just, uh, you know, find a fixture. This one's a geometric um, uh, die sharpening fixture. But, uh, you know, if you tried to find one of these, you're going to want 500 bucks for it probably. But, you know, stuff like this you can find. Nobody knows what it is cheap half the time. As a matter of fact, this... Uh, this came with this machine when I bought this from um, the old uh, George Washington machinery. Um, I think I bought this, uh, oh gosh, uh, probably about 1990, I think. I don't know. Maybe a little, little bit earlier. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, when I bought this machine way back there, this cost a lot of money. And I, I'm a bet, I'm not even going to tell you how much this thing cost. It was terrible. They were uh, more valued back then, you know. People still um, were doing a lot of their own tool making in most shops and um, not uh, going full, full board on the... Uh, um, a carbide inset suits, you know, um, they got carbide inserts for just every purpose and you can go that route, but it's absolutely uh, expensive. And I think for the home shop, uh, small shops and stuff like that, uh, the, uh, the uh, going with lots of different inserts is just not economical. You know, stick with the uh, general metal moving ones, you know. But uh, I, I work for a hydraulic shop, and uh, the guy had absolutely every ISCAR tool. And I mean, they have tree panning inserts. They, <laughs> they have all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It, the, it it was a busy, busy, busy shop, and uh, it did hydraulic pumps, and so uh, generated, uh, you know, the big money. But for you know, uh, it, <laughs> I think uh, even in in that shop, uh, it uh, uh, was was a little too much, you know. But uh, I uh, I found uh, myself that uh, um, if. Oh, I just stuck with the basic inserts for moving metal and then for finish tools and stuff I grind them because uh, uh, carbide inserts that uh, take light cuts uh, that do a good finish uh, are high shear and they don't last very long and it's not economical for me to do that uh, like uh, the Monarch 10 E and uh, uh, some of the uh, more expensive boring head systems. 
uh, have uh, specialty inserts and stuff like that. And an edge can cost 20 bucks. And you might only get two or three cuts out of it under uh, the most critical, uh, uh, you know, tolerances. Because uh, you have to, uh, the best way to, um, to reach a close tolerance is, is using two finish cuts and the last one's based off the first. So your tool has to la at least last two cuts, you know. And then on the lathe, uh, you got a, a deflection to worry about. And uh, so anyway, I uh, am back onto these machines and uh, I thought I'd do this rambling video because it's longer than uh, uh, 11 and a half minutes and uh, I learned how to edit so I'll try uh, attaching this uh, together because this GoPro camera like breaks stuff up and you have to attach it together uh, by video uh, editing and I found that really uh, really a problem uh, hard for me to learn you know <laughs> but I noticed uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people that are good at uh, making videos are just playing rotten at machining. It's just the way it is. Okay, now I'm going to uh, get busy so I can show some paint in a couple of days. Okay, so I'll get on that. And if I come up with something this afternoon when I'm chased out by the heat, I'll do uh, another video. And uh, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. And uh, uh, this is my uh, machine tools in the driveway uh, reality show, I guess. Uh, hopefully it'll be over soon and I'll just get all this stuff tucked in here and just do straight machine work. That's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Okay, I will get back. Oh, wrong button.